What's up everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm going to show you guys how to change out the bed in a panda warmer. We're going to do it in 20 to 25 minutes. Now the reason I got off on this and I'm doing this video is because a coworker of mine, we got in a little bit of a dispute and I said that I could do it in about 30 minutes and he said that this was an hour to two hour worth of job. So I actually had everybody come out here, I pulled out my tools and I did the change out of this entire bed and I did it in 26 minutes. But in doing so, we found ways to do this even better and even faster. And I'm gonna share those tips and tricks with you today, coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. To get started with this job, we need to clear two spaces. One, to lay out all the components so that they're nice and organized, and the other, to invert the table so that we can rebuild it as the parts come off the old system. So here we go. I've got my inverted brand new table here, and I'm gonna start taking all the components off of here. We're gonna place them over there. But first, let's cover the tools. For this job, it's actually kind of simple. You only need a couple tools. We need a pair of hemostats or something to grab some cables. We need a 2.5 millimeter Allen key, a four millimeter Allen key, and I've got a 530 seconds bit, which is technically the same thing as a four millimeter. We have a short and a long extension. We're also gonna need a mini ratchet. We're gonna do this with all analog tools. Since all the fasteners are gonna be put in to pockets, they're embedded in plastic. We are not gonna be using power tools for this job, although when I raced in front of all my crew, I did use power tools. That's because I have pretty good throttle control on my impact. Do not use power tools, folks. You will probably mess this up. So the first step of this process is we're gonna remove all the panels from the bed. It's easily done because there's little plastic buttons. Turn it at an angle that releases one side, you can remove the other side. We're gonna lay them off to the side. Now these are acrylic panels, they can get damaged kind of easily. You lift up, press the button, they fall right out. There you go. The head's board down here, there's a little button you depress, you pull it straight up. Now that we have all that out of the way, We've got the scale. Now the scale is a very delicate item. It's only rated for seven kilograms, so don't go stacking a whole bunch of stuff on top of it. I think that's the number one reason why this guy gets damaged in the first place. So we're gonna remove the scale and we're gonna place it in a safe place. To do so, you just pull it directly out on the connector, pick the scale straight up. Now be mindful that anytime you disturb the scale from its resting position, you have to do the five kilogram recalibration. So we're gonna do that at the very end. Now I have the bed completely stripped down. Right here's the tilt handle. The first thing I like to do is tilt it down towards the feet. And then we're gonna go on the underside. We're gonna take a look at some of the fasteners and get them prepped. Now here we are on the underside. There's four fasteners that we're gonna pay attention to right here, which are holding the pneumatic locking strut and the brake. What we're gonna first start out by doing is breaking loose the two front ones. We're not gonna remove them. We're just gonna break them loose. Just like that. Now that they're loose, we're gonna remove the two rear ones. Take those fasteners and we're going to place them someplace safe. And we're going to stop at this point and we're going to level out the bed and start at the other side. 
down here at the other end, we're going to go ahead and put one hand on the back side of the table. We're going to grip the handle, release it, and then tilt the bed in the opposite direction. Now this is a good time to utilize your hemostats. And what we're going to do is clamp them on the cable in their loosest position. And this is to prevent the cable from retracting. Because if it retracts, there's a little claw down on the pneumatic locking cylinder that will make your life miserable. <sighs> Just trust me. You want to make sure that you bind up the cables at this point. So we have two fasteners up here on the release handle. And then we've got the four fasteners up here which are locking the front yoke. Now on the front yoke, on the rear fasteners, we're just going to loosen them and then we're going to remove the front fastener completely. Make sure that you keep the locking washer and the regular washer on the fastener. Now that we have our front yoke bolts out, we grab the handle and bring the bed back to a level position. That way there we have full access to the rear and to the front. Now we have two fasteners right here for the handle. In order to do this, I'm going to use the longer extension. handle has a comb on the rear and that grabs onto these balls that are on the cable. It just comes off, slides right off. And the remaining fastener is going to be one 2.5 millimeter Allen, which is going to be right here. There's going to be an access hole. Now this screw is going to probably be pretty, pretty tight. So I recommend setting a pair of pliers on an Allen that's on its end and crack it sideways. I pull down on the bracket so the screw doesn't just booger off and lightly pull it down. And here we have the cable assembly. You can see the cables are being retained by the, the hemostats and we are now ready to go ahead and remove the bed. The next step to be is take these yokes, the two brackets that are on there, we slide them sideways so that they're releasing the pin. And on the back side, we're going to do the exact same. Now that pin should be free. The bed is ready to be lifted off. At this point, to remove the bed, we make sure that we have our preparation surface ready because we are going to move it over and invert it. It should lift directly up, and then we flip it up and down. The locking cylinder should be in a slightly upright position, and make sure that each of these dowel pins are undisturbed because they can move side to side, which is going to make remounting the table surface an absolute nightmare. Do not pull on these cables at all, because they will make this guy in the back move, and if it moves, you're going to have a very fun time putting it back in the proper position because these ones here have to be completely in a very specific distance from one another in order for the table surface to mount back up properly. The next step in the process is to remove all the 
hardware that was holding the pins. So we're going to take our long extension, spin those out. I generally try to keep the fastener with the bracket. Now since I have my other table surface here, I could take all the fasteners and move them directly over to this one, but I'm going to be reinstalling everything back onto this bed since this bed is absolutely fine. So I've got the retention hardware off. Next we have five fasteners in each of these side panels. I usually work by breaking them loose. Then you can see I always like switching over to just the rod, doing the rest manually. I keep the fasteners in the holes. Do not remove any of these fasteners. Now that all the fasteners are loose, you can lift straight up place in a safe space. Next we're going to do the same thing to the panel on the other side. Now that the two side panels are off, the very next thing that we're going to do is remove the plastic latches. There's three of them. Two of them are going to be identical and one of them is going to be inverted. Its orientation is going to be slightly different and it will only go in one way. Now on each of these plastic latches, there's a large button and then there's a smaller release pin. There's two size openings. You really can't mess this up. Just make sure that when you remove these, that they don't get separated. When it pops out, the spring is going to want to push the rear piece away from the front piece. Make sure that it stays together as an assembly. Remove the other two. Now that we have those off, there's the handle, which has got six fasteners. We have 
one component that a lot of people forget about. And that is the push release latch over here. This is for the headboard. And there's a small C-clip on there. Do be very careful when you push off the C-clip, make sure that you keep a hold of it. I can do this one with my fingertips. But as you see, the C-clip is very tiny. Then the whole latch assembly will pop out as one unit. Make sure you keep it together as an assembly. Move it over to the next piece immediately. So that's gonna be the first thing I'm going to put in for the reassembly process. The bed is now completely stripped down and it is ready to be changed out. So that's how easy it is. Spring latch is already installed. Next we're gonna do the handle. Now when you put the fasteners back in this unit, be mindful that the lock washer always goes towards the head of the fastener first, and then the flat washer goes on the bottom. Notice I'm not tightening down any of the fasteners till all the fasteners are installed. That's a common problem, is that people always want to put all the fasteners in, start screwing them down, and then one of them is not going to line up correctly. Don't tighten any of them down until they're all installed. Now that all my handle fasteners are in, we're just going to go ahead and snug them up. They do not have to be cranked down crazy tight. They do have a lock washer on there that you're gonna compress. And once it's compressed, it is a tight fastener. Remember, these pockets are installed into a polymer. And it's very easy to go ahead and crack those pockets. Handles installed. Next, we're going to go ahead and install these quick release buttons. Here is where it really benefits to maintain some sort of orientation of your parts when you re remove them and place them off to the side. That way, there, I know exactly what part is supposed to go in what hole. up right now. Remember, the fastener is going through plastic. It doesn't have to be cranked down incredibly tight. The next is gonna be my two side rails, here and here. I kept those in the same orientation. I'm going to use the middle fastener as my locating pin. So I'm gonna place my tool on the center fastener and line it up. Don't snug it down until all your fasteners are threaded.
and snug them down. Okay, next is one of the biggest tricks in the book. We have these brackets. There's going to be one side that's going to be marred. They go here, 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 and here. We are only going to put one fastener in, and that is going to be the farthest fastener from the side that you're going to access. So for the middle ones, you're going to put them here. Notice how I'm screwing them down so that they're still movable, but they're almost completely taut. That way there we can just swing it back and lock it in place. The front fastener is what we're going to install on the underside. Okay, a quick check. Make sure that all my correct fasteners are in. Got our quick release pins, they're all tight. Got the two side rails in. And we've got all these fasteners for the pins. And they're, they're tightened down so that they're not gonna move. And they're all mounted sideways. So once we invert it and put it down, all we gotta do is swing these down like so. And that locks it in place. So we're gonna put it like this. Next stop, we're gonna invert the table. We're gonna place it back on its home. Now that we're ready to install the bed, the only thing you have to be mindful of is make sure that these cables are located right in the middle. If they're off to the side, they're gonna be caught underneath the bed. Not gonna be a good situation. If you have any rust or corrosion on these pins, right now is a very good time to put a little bit of lubrication on them. And everything looks like it's checking out. Also, clean the underside here. Why not, you have it off. We're going to take the bed, we are going to flip it upside down, like so. Now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to use the middle pin to locate the whole bed and make sure that it's nice and parallel. There we go. And it should fall exactly back onto its home. From here, we swing those brackets back closed and we lock the pins. Okay. We're gonna get under here. All right, swivel these guys closed. Like so. And on the back, that pin there should be nice and centered. We'll swivel these guys closed, and that completely locks it into place. Next, we're going to put the fasteners in here, and up there, and we're gonna screw it down. For this step, we're going to use the short extension again, along with the ratchet. Put the fastener on, place it up in the hole, and start threading them in. Now these ones here we can go ahead and snug up once you get a side in correctly. Remember, you don't have to go too tight. All you're doing is compressing that locked washer. After we get the screws that hold the center pivot pin tightened down, 
The very next thing that we're going to do is install the handle. The reason we do that next is so that we have something to grab and give us more access to the rear. So what we're going to do is get the 2.5 millimeter. We're going to install the tiny little fastener back up and in here. It goes in the middle hole. Make sure that this bracket is located properly on the locating pins, which are plastic. Now that that guy is installed, next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the handle assembly. The handle assembly has this little comb. Make sure that both cables are located in the comb in their proper spot. It's going to rock up into position. And then I'm going to use my long extension. I'm going to put those fasteners in next. Once both of them are threaded in, then you can tighten them down. Don't over tighten them. You do not want to crack this plastic. Now that the handle assembly is in, we can release our hemostats. That cable is going absolutely nowhere now. Then we grab the handle and tilt the bed towards the foot end. That gives us much more space down there to put in the next fasteners. Now utilizing the short extension, we're going to put the fastener on the extension and we're going to manually thread it in the hole. We can do so for both sides. Now that all the fasteners are at least threaded in, we can go ahead and tighten them down. Do not over tighten. Now that the bed is completely installed, go ahead and grab the handle and we'll bring it back to nice and flat level surface. Now we're ready to start putting the side panels back on. I like starting with the headboard, pop it in, press the button falls properly into place. Now all the side panels are on, we're ready for the scale. Make sure that the scale cable is routed correctly. And go ahead and plug it in. Give it a good function check. Correctly. Now the very last step of this process, is maybe one of the most important, is to calibrate the scale with a five kilogram weight. And you just changed out the bed on a GE Panda system. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below with what you'd like to see in future videos.